Hey, it's Ragave. How's it going? Today, I'm going to be telling you a little story about when I first came out. Now, coming out is hard as fuck. And some of us come out a bunch of different times. Each one of those can be just as hard, if not even more difficult. I've heard a lot of people's stories, but I only know mine in full detail. And today, that's what I'm going to share with you. <clears throat> Before I begin, I'd like to set a few intentions, you know... And this video is basically for uh, whoever needs to hear this. You know, I remember at that time in my life, I felt really alone. I felt like, yeah, I just felt like super duper alone, you know? So, so whoever's struggling, whoever, you know, relates to this story and found this page in general, just know you're valid, you're beautiful, you're perfect, and that sometimes um other people's emotional reactions to our lifestyle it can be really hurtful and it's really really important to you know not take in that energy and to just stay here you know stick around um because I, I promise if you do i don't know it's crazy it's like if you allow yourself, things just switch, you know? I don't know. It's it's like, for example, I tell this story, right? But like, I love my family. I'm really connected to them. And I've really been able to learn how to, you know, separate them from me. And uh, for better or for worse, it's it works out and I love them and I respect them. And I think, pretty sure they love and respect me too, you know? It's, I promise, there's, I promise you, if you lean into your life and your experiences and just accept everything with grace and love, you will get far away from what disrupts your peace and whatever that looks like for you. And, you know, then that's really beautiful, you know, and I, and I wish you good luck on your journey because I truly believe that's possible for anybody, you know, if that's something you choose to do and really, really work towards. Yeah. And, uh, you know, on the other side of things... <clears throat> I think sometimes, you know, people, they get so wrapped up in what's in front of them, they forget to look at a bigger picture until they hear something that zooms them out, right? So this video can also be for somebody who maybe is going through somebody coming out to them and they don't really understand and feel like, damn, I don't know how to react or whatever. I'm not saying that this is going to be related to you at all or whatever. I'm just saying that, like, I don't know. It's just good to have, like, different perspectives and stuff. So... Hoping that this story reaches whoever it needs to reach. <laughs> Alrighty. So I've wrote some things down, you know, so I don't get off track. I was trying, I was trying to like be like, all right, I'm gonna pretend like I'm not gonna read anything. I'm just gonna, but you know what? Whatever. I'm reading. It's gonna be hard to stay focused. It's pretty emotional. I'm gonna be really vulnerable. Um, I'm excited. So I really hope that this message is well received. Okay. All right. All right. I don't think I'm gonna put this right here. <laughs> That's what's up. Sorry, I didn't just do that to begin with. <laughs> okay. So I've come out a few times in my life, right? But for this video, um, I'm gonna talk about coming out as lesbian or like gay specifically. Um, from when I was younger, like elementary to high school. You know, I know that sounds weird, but it's actually pretty common for queer people to have to come out multiple times to people in their life and that's because you know a lot of people just really aren't receptive to receiving that information so sometimes you really got to validate it and not only that but also you're really young right so a lot of people they genuinely are just like hey you know like don't put labels on yourself don't like hold yourself like no like you're not that just trust me things happen hormones blah blah just it's more of like a weighted out thing, right? But they don't always have the right way to address that. So it can come off, it can come off a little intense, you know? Um, I personally, from what I remember, came out two solid times before I was like, hey, I'm, you know, I'm a lesbian at the time. Um, yeah. <laughs> It's a, you know, before that, I feel like so many people are going to relate to what I'm about to say. Uh, before, I, before I, you know, before I really hammered it in, 
uh, I came out a couple times and I said, you know, hey, you know, I was actually in fifth grade the first time I came out. I was like, hey, you know, I think I had already kissed someone. So I was, this was already like, you know, in action. I, 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 at the time, I didn't really know myself or trust myself, but as an adult, and now I'm realizing I don't really bring things up unless I've already like thought about it a bunch of times. And that's, again, that's something you only learn through consistency, consistency and time. So no one would have known that about me. But when I brought it up to, you know, my parent at the time, it was like, hey, you know, <laughs> but they responded with the almost comical, it's a phase. <laughs> now, let's go ahead and pause why, while most queer people watching the story can completely and utterly resonate with the bane of their existence, which is to come out of the straight closet to their family and they hear the words, it's just a phase. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a... Uh, it's cool, you know what I mean? Like people, like I said, people aren't like hurtful, like on purpose and all that. I truly believe that. So, I mean, I know that nobody was out there trying to make confuse me. No one was out there trying to, you know, whatever. Um, I just think that maybe the person I told was maybe, you know, maybe a little bit more just not receptive and not ready. You know, they weren't ready. That's what I'm gonna say. They weren't ready. Um, but I you know, I was such a fucking people pleaser at the time. Everyone was like, oh my gosh, like, I was the apple in people's fucking eye, you know? I was young and, you know, full of life and whatever the fuck. And so that was true, man. You know, I really was. And so I really always want to try to make everybody happy because I realized I was already making people happy and my energy was so vibrant. And I was already like a little bit, you know, of a black sheep in the family because of how vibrant I am. And they're, my family, you know, they don't have a hard time showing emotions and feelings and love. Um, so for me to be loved that way was, it was really impactful, you know? Um, but yeah, man, like I said, I went downhill and I turned to a fucking hoe. I really did. Um, total slut. I was like, all right, cool. Like clearly, you know, I'm okay. Well, maybe I'm not queer. Maybe this is just a phase, even though I'm not her kissing females at this point already and, you know, doing whatever, whatever, um, at this point, maybe like, you know, middle school and then high school. Um, I was with a lot of boys, you know, I was, with a lot, I was with a lot of boys. People watching this video are like, yeah, I was a hoe. I was, I was. And you know what? I ain't fucking ashamed. I don't give a fuck. But, you know, at the time, it really affected me, man, because it just, it almost felt forced. It wasn't, it wasn't natural. Not that these people forced me, you know, nothing like that. It's just... Every time I was with these guys, it was just like me, me forcing myself to do these things because I had to prove and I had to fulfill this prophecy of which was a phase that me being queer was a phase. It had to be a phase because I wanted, I wanted my family to be happy. I wanted them to be proud of me. I wanted them to love me and accept me wholly. So I decided, obviously this at the time I wasn't conscious, right? Now looking back, I can see all this, but at the time looking back i was just I was, I was fucking sacrificing myself for other people just boom 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 and that created a fucking pattern within my life that we're not we're not getting into the hole today but anyway um what was we at this is why we wrote a script okay um basically it became too much right i decided to set the record straight once and for all and um yeah, so I'll, I remember I was downstairs, I was doing my homework, I was texting a little friend, whatever, whatever, letting her know, like, hey, you know, I'm gonna go tell my mom, da da da. So I uh, stop my homework, I go upstairs, and I'm like, I think my mom was like, I don't know what the fuck. <laughs> if you know my mom, then like, you know what I mean when I say I don't know what the fuck. I, she was just doing something in the room, man, and I walked in on it. Nothing like weirdo, just like random. I don't know, like super random. I remember she was on the floor though. So I don't know what she was doing, but anyhow. Um, so I go in there and I sat down. <laughs> She's probably ironing something, honestly, on the carpet. But anyhow, so I go in there and I'm like, hey mom, like, keep it brief, you know, like I'm gay and I know you, I didn't, you know, and I know you think it's a phase and everything, but like, this is me. And that's just what it is. And she said, uh, I know. I've always known. So, 
given this little bit of a foreshadow I've already given, I think you can kind of understand how I was feeling when she said that. <laughs> I was just like, oh, he wasn't going to let me know. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. So I kind of just wrapped it up and left because I kind of said earlier too, my family's unemotional. They're not, no communication at all. Pretty much sweep it under the rug. And more than anything, it's not even a sweep under the rug. It's a like, no matter what happens, you got to be like so proud <laughs> to like not address it and just be like, moving forward, this is what it is. And that's just it, you know, and boom. So I was like, oh shit, okay, cool. Um, awesome. You know, but I wasn't going to talk to her about that because there was, there was no room for communication in that time in my life. Cool. So yeah, I pretty much wrapped it up, went downstairs and um, like I said, wrapped it up and then went to bed, whatever. So the next day, um, I continued on business as usual. Went to school, ow, fuck. Went to school. I was like, I believe I was like 17 at the time. Um, I was like a senior, a junior. Um, I wanna say senior, but I don't know. But anyhow. Long and short, long and short. Uh, yeah, I remember the next day though, I had a swim meet, right? And you'll see why I even remember this part. But so the next day I uh, go to school and yeah, it was, it was a day, right? So my mom calls me, my mom always used to call me at school. So my mom calls me and she says, you know, I told I told your non and your papa and your uncles, and, you know, and I don't want you to feel like no one accepts you. So I told them so that they can deal with me, um, and they said it's fine and they love you, basically, right? I was fucking irritated, man. I was just like, are you joking? You know what I mean? Like, how are you gonna just like tell everybody? It was so hard telling you, and but she did. But she told everybody, and she said they were cool with it, and whatever, whatever, and. I don't really actually know and I don't really, I mean, I guess they all kind of talked to me in their own individual way since then, but I mean, it was just like such a weird and like forceful and just traumatic way of, again, I don't, my mom, she loves me and everything, man. Like, so I know that she genuinely in her heart of hearts was just doing her best and trying or, you know, whatever. But like I said, her and I just have always had a, a language barrier maybe my whole life. So, there's that. I love her. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I don't think I told her I was upset then either because it's like she loves me and it was out of love. So you don't want to be like a dick, but like also you feel like shit. So you just stuff it up. Um, yeah. But well, while I was at school, my uncle calls me. <laughs> He's like, hey. Hey, you know, uh, hey Rascal, can you know can you come on over? Uh, can you come on over, basically? So I'm like, you know what? Fuck school. I'm heading out of here. I'm gonna go to my uncle's house. So I go to his house. He's out there in the backyard, pumping iron as per usual. And uh, I don't think him and I really thought how impactful that conversation would be. It was brief. My uncle is not a man of many words. This uncle, this uncle is not a man of any words. Um, many words. We're just gonna leave it at that. But um. But yeah, okay, so then, yeah, so he says basically, I don't remember the exact words, you know, but um, but he basically told me at 17 years old, there's a chance that I might not have it all figured out. So don't put a, like, do what you want to do, be who you want to be, live your best life, but essentially don't put a label on yourself. You don't need to lock it down. Just like do the thing and don't do the thing. Cause you're gonna go all over in your life and it's cool with basically um just going through the motions and not and feel not feeling like you're locked in so then you can't like basically switch up, you know, like just be free. I'm young as fuck. Um which is crazy because now I'm trans. So a part of me is like whether he knew it or not, it was such a foreshadowing moment in my life. You know, it was like a spirit. In my opinion, he was my uncle, he was my family. So it was like ancestrally, a spirit was coming through him. And it was like, hey, just so you know, like, this isn't it. 
this is hard as fuck. This is hard and this sucks and you feel like you're letting everybody down, but this isn't it. So hang in there and be open to it. It's funny because even thinking about it now, I w I've been so close to it for so long. School. Um, I actually had a swim meet that day, so I had to get back and I had to jump on that bus because we had an away game. You know, so I went back, jumped on that bus, and I remember I was definitely moving you know, a lot slower than usual, getting ready and everything. I remember being in the locker room last that day, like on the way out to go warm up. Um, I don't know if anyone necessarily even noticed if I wasn't feeling okay. Um, I'm definitely the type of person who, when I'm not feeling very well, um, very few people notice, you know? I'm not like putting myself in a victim state or that's just what it is. People don't really notice when I'm not okay. So it's definitely forced me to come outside of my bubble. And when I'm not okay, I really gotta make sure I ask for help because like I said, no one's gonna really notice. So I gotta make sure I don't expect people to read my mind, you know, which is fair. Um, so I remember when I came in the locker room, it was like real sunny and everything was overwhelming and the sounds and everything were just loud. <laughs> And, but that was my reality, so I moved into it. Um, I remember my coach's face, specifically. Um, he was a really, really big dude. Uh, he had crystal blue eyes. and You know, I actually really haven't even realized, I didn't really think about it until right now, but I haven't spoken to him or my other coach in like 10 years. You know, and I don't, it feels heavy to think about them, not because I necessarily like miss them or whatever, but it's just like it's been so long since I've around some, some since I've been around something so familiar and so safe. Honestly, um, I hope they don't mind that I'm gonna mention them by name. But Gabriel Martinez, Chris Schneider, thank you for you know the patience that you held with me, and thank you for the discipline that you taught me. Thank you for the pure love and non-threatening personalities that allowed me to feel safe, and ultimately allowed me to know that men are truly and absolutely worthy. You know, there wasn't a lot of there wasn't a lot of men in my life growing up and the ones that were um, one reason or another, you know, just weren't the um, masculine energy figure that I particularly needed, you know? Um, yeah, I mean, there was a few, don't get me wrong, but I don't know, it's just not the same, man. Like my two coaches back there, they were so, they were so like, they, were, they just never let me down, you know? They were so, cause I mean, they were the coach, right? They were consistent, they were there for the one job, but it was like, they kept me a place where I had to be. And like I said, they were really disciplined because of the whole sports thing. And then they, I couldn't act out because of the whole team and it just, but then like, again, but they were also so non-threatening and so loving and so non, non-scary. There were so many scary men in my life and it was just, it was just nice and they were great. And I just want them to know that, um, regardless of where you guys are at in your life and everything, I commend you for having that patience. Um, and that, you know, at least if there's just one person, I think your message was reached, but I think there's multiple people. You guys are both fantastic coaches. A lot of people agree. <laughs> so back to the story. Um, I remember that my race was up and so I walked over, you know, I acknowledged my coach and I got on that dieting block. I fixed up my cap and had my goggles, grabbed that board and boop. <laughs> I don't know how to say like bing, poop, beep. The thing beeped and, and um, I'm swimming or whatever. I always really, really enjoyed being in the water, right? It's like you're in there, you're holding your breath and you're like doing the thing and there's just like water gushing by your ears and you can't really hear anything. So it just feels so free, right? And so whatever, I finish my race and get to the block and I look up and last person I would have wanted to see, my old man, they call him, um, technically, I guess. So I see him there and I already am like, I, you know, I kind of sink into the water and I accept my reality. I know my mom probably said something, number one and number two, he's there to yell at me, pull me out. Who knows? Who knows what he's there for? But it's not nothing no good. But all I know is by the time I got out, he was already gone. So, I mean, speculation, I think he was there just to assert his dominance. He literally looked at me and he left. It was, it was very classic, I would say. He's, 
at the time of my life, you know, we didn't get along. He was extremely controlling. He was hyper explosive. He loved to yell. He was aggressive. And he hadn't even been in my life for that long, you know, and I just felt really disconnected from him. I was really anxious around him. And overall, I was, I was really afraid of him. It was hard seeing him that day. <laughs> Whatever. I caught my breath and got out of the pool and I basically ran to go check my phone. I had a few missed calls from my mom. I called her back. Um, she let me know that, you know, she had told him and everything. And he was un basically unsatisfied. I don't know exactly what the fuck happened, but he didn't really feel comfortable with me in the home. So uh, essentially, I, from what I understand, he was kind of like, I had to go, right? Um, or like my mom was kind of like, I don't want you around him because he's batshit crazy. <laughs> so let him cool off or I don't know what the whole situation was, right? Because again, we don't communicate and stuff. But I, what I do know is my mom told me don't go home, that we're going to be staying at a friend's house and my sisters are coming with. So we're all leaving. <laughs> um, yeah, until he calms down. The bus ride back to school was a quiet one for me. I remember that week was spring break and there was some kind of dance and I missed the dance after all, for obvious, so I wasn't feeling it. And um, during spring break, the house that we were staying at, this isn't funny, but it's just like, of course, um, the like mom's dad died, which essentially was the kid's grandpa and so we were pretty much there for them during that week. We had nowhere to go at this point. So we're like there one morning for them and we're providing support and they're providing support for us. I was, I was more than happy to provide support, you know, selfishly. I would, I wanted to be more present for them than I did for myself because I didn't want to feel my own pain. So I really immersed and did my best to elevate them. Um, at that point in my life, I just felt like I had let everyone down. I felt like I was a problem that my lifestyle, my sexuality was a problem. And, you know, at the time it was like, how could I be so selfish? You know, I, I love my mom, but I wanted to be mad at her for telling everyone, you know, and, and I loved her for standing up for me, but I was hurt and I was alone. I felt so alone and there was so many other people in the room because no one understood, you know, no one, no one asked, no one asked how, how I was feeling or what I wanted or it, it just it just was moving so quickly it wasn't anything personal it was just like everything was happening so fast and then this and then that and it was just like oh my gosh and like I said the communication wasn't really there so granted at the time I didn't know what I needed and now I'm looking back that's probably what I needed you know questions and blah blah but at the time, I was just like, oh, fuck, this is fucking crazy. This sucks. I hate myself. I hate you. I hate me. I hate everything. What the fuck am I doing? I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. This sucks. Like, this is my fault. We're here. I'm alone. No one's listening to me. No one's talking to me. No one's asking me nothing. No one's, like, trying to fix anything. We're just trying to pretend like nothing happened. But it did. It did happen. All that did happen. You know? <sighs> Anyhow. I know my mom did her best. She has always been so human to me, you know? So throughout our struggles, I've always been, I've always seen the duality and, and I knew for certain that she did her best basically, right? Like she hurt my feelings, but I know why, et cetera. Um, she just wasn't built like me. And she had a hard time tapping into herself and being vulnerable, you know? I know that. And I kind of felt comfort in it for a while. She knew it too, you know? I don't know how she feels about it, but I know she knows that she's, you know, not very emotionally available and that I am pretty emotional and sensitive. So I probably would have appreciated that more. Um, I was different and that's no one's fault, but it did create a serious communication barrier, um, which left me feeling really alone for a really long time. I sometimes just, I don't know. That's just what it was, right? Superficial stuff is like, you know, keeping that superficial sweeping under is like easy, right? But sometimes I just feel like superficial conversations, superficial actions are making active steps away from what the serious or actual issue or actual what you want to be 
present like what you really want to talk about you're not talking about it so you're doing your best just like okay let me use these cues and superficiality to kind of like mold the situation so we can avoid that but eventually it's like you're stepping you step so far away you seem you're so far i can't even see you are you real are you even the same like i can't see that far you know i just can't feel that far so i don't know <sighs> Some time had passed that week and it was my mother's usual routine to go back to him and act like nothing ever happened. I know it was only her trauma and I don't blame her. You know, she, she wanted family and she wanted him. He was charming and he was good with words, so you get it. Um, I remember being home alone when we came back and I was on the phone and I was telling someone how scared I was that I was home and I didn't, I didn't want to be there and I didn't want to see him and anyway. He snuck in at some point into the house and he overheard my conversation. I saw him, in the, you know, by my door, I hung up and and he just basically was like, all right, let's talk about it and called me into the room and sat me down and I remember he said, I remember first he mocked me for saying that I was afraid on the phone. He was like, oh, you know, what are you afraid for? And like, what do you got? The, I don't know what he said exactly, but he basically was like, you know, like, I don't know the words, but he essentially was telling, I really just, the thing about it is I was, I became like, I dissociated so quickly and easily whenever it became, whenever it came to situations around talking to him because he was so hurtful with his words. He was so demeaning. He was so belittling. He's so rude and he's so crass and he just doesn't know any ignorant and he doesn't know how to talk to people, especially his children, because he feels like he's a superior. So he's like, and he feels like he has, and plus no one's there at the house, so no one's gonna make him answer for it. And he's just him and I. And at this, I'm pretty sure he knew that he, he was able to take advantage of me. I was like, as loud and everything as I was, I was scared of him. He had to have known, you know? Maybe he didn't, but I was scared as fuck. And he fucking was in that room being like, you know, you telling people that you're afraid, da 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 da. And I'm like, whatever. So anyway, he gets into the talk, and the first thing he says is, You think I care that you're gay? I don't care if you like dogs. And then I pretty much completely dissociated so i don't remember the rest of that conversation but at some point it ended i don't really like remember after that but that's what they say is like ptsd right like when you can remember something and like things were different after I still felt horrible after the talk, even though I wasn't listening. Just like, I just always felt like everything was my fault and I just, I don't know, I always hurt and it was hard, you know? So basically at the end of the whole that, I'm kind of putting it off, but I'm gonna, I am gonna finish what I said, but. So basically after he told me all that, I, I decided I decided that that was the moment to come out to him about his nephew being um, sexually abusive towards me. I basically said, you know, you're so upset with me being gay or whatever, but I'm pretty sure it's your fault because your family is the one that brought this, you know, particular thing into my life and this particular act happened. And the tone totally changed because obviously I put myself in like, you know, I was like I said, I was being manipulative and I knew I was being manipulative at the time. That did happen. You know, some some things did go down when I was younger. Um, we're not talking about that now, you know, whatever, but, um, but I didn't, that wasn't why I was, I was gay because I was, because I'm, I'm gay because I'm gay. I'm queer because I'm queer. I'm trans because I'm trans. But I just, at the time I, I, I wanted to fucking, I want him to support me as weird as that sounds. Um, and I really believed that you know, that was a way of not letting everybody down, of having something to blame it on, you know? Like, it's like, it's not my fault I'm gay. Like, look at this, you know? Um, but yeah, I just want him to feel hurt, basically, too. But um, I recognize that it was trauma. I was, my, I was my authentic, pure, true self and was not receiving the love, support, and care I wanted. So I tried to manipulate the system so that I could get the attention that I thought I deserved. Not all attention is good attention, my mom used to tell me. I knew what it meant, but now 
but not how I know now. I'm sorry to myself for causing myself so much unnecessary pain and agony, but I'm also grateful for the lessons I've learned. I was really upset with myself for a long time, angry even. I had moved through sadness, depression, and began masking it. All for what? At the time, I couldn't see clearly. I just felt. To middle school, to high school me, I'd like to tell you something from this side. And that's this. I'm sorry you're in this situation. You don't deserve this, and you are fucking beautiful. I know it seems like there's no one there for you, but I am. It may not seem like much right now, but one day you will grow to love me and realize that being here with me right now is one of the best honors you're ever going to witness. Stay true to you. I know being weird feels natural. I know that going against the grain is only who you are, and it is fucking awesome. Normal is whack, and you don't even like Ernie, so every time he docks, do me a favor. Sing a love song and give him a hug after. It may not seem like much, but with consistency and continuous acknowledgement for who you are, things will change. With love, Prince Mercury, Ra Agave. Thanks for listening. Besos por todo. Te amo y luz. <laughs> Thanks for listening. I hope you have a great day. Don't forget to look in the mirror and let yourself know that you love you.